Microsoft had a gigantic announcement yesterday bringing out Copilot for Microsoft 365. Dan, yeah. you want to yeah. leave yeah, this one? Yeah, it's interesting, Pat, because um, we didn't do the GPT-4 announcement here because there were so many other announcements. But by the way, GPT-4 came out. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, that's going to be a lot of the foundation here of, of taking what we kind of experienced to the next level. Oh, and, and we also, you know, forgot to mention Honeywell had a new CEO. I'm just squeezing that into the Microsoft segment. Um, okay, so it totally fits, right? I, I just mean things that didn't get talked about because there were so many things to talk about. And so um, we went to the event, what, in early February, Pat, and the Bing-powered edge browser kind of open internet GPT was disclosed. And then quickly after, we've now seen – Dynamics come out and a big set of announcements around Dynamics 365 and ChatGPT and OpenAI. And this week we saw the co-pilot being now announced for M365, which means Teams, all, uh, all the office tools, they're all getting supercharged with GPT. Now, Pat, you and I uh, and a few others, you know, have had a chance to sort of be you know, briefed and see some of these demos and I'm blown away. I just wanna say I'm blown away one, at the pace of innovation that's coming out of Redmond, the company is doing an incredibly good job of taking that $10 billion investment into OpenAI and supercharging its entire portfolio. If you can't start to kind of predict what's ahead for you, take your head out of the sand. It's not that hard to figure out. Now, the exact sets of features that will be launched, this gets really interesting, Pat. Um, Microsoft was able to show demonstrations of which you could take like a technical marketing document. And from that technical marketing document, you could say, basically, create a press release. And voila. I mean, and, and I read this thing. You know, there's a lot of kind of controversy about the accuracy and the quality because it's so exciting to see the generative thing happen that sometimes you forget to actually read and be like, is this factual? Is this accurate? And I think we do all have to remember, though, that this is um, reinforcement. So as we continue to do more of this, as we continue to create more of this and continue to provide more data, to the models, the models will get better and they will continue to work better. But what I read when I saw this demonstration and the, the press release that they created, pretty impressive. Um, and then of course it has customization. So they call it a co-pilot by the way, because the whole idea is this is not supposed to be a displacement tool. And this is gonna be a really interesting conversation we're gonna be having with the market, with Wall Street, with employees, with uh, advocacy firms. Uh, you know, I wrote a book called Human Machine. I don't know if you remember that. I don't talk much about the books I've written. I wrote seven by the way. But um, so that's one of the things you don't talk about. Yeah, one I rarely um, talk about my accomplishments uh, because I don't have any. No, I'm kidding. But, it, you know, the whole idea with human machine was sort of this convergence. And we were kind of calling this uh, this was four or five years ago um, that this was going to happen. But, you know, what we're seeing now is this sort of augmentation process. So what this uh, Microsoft Copilot does is it augments the worker. So your comms team used to have to sift through hundreds of technical documents, meet with product managers, product marketing teams, meet with comms, meet with executives, strategy teams, come together and figure out how do we take two years of work on developing a new product and put it into four paragraphs in 500 words and send it out on a newswire. Well, now you don't have to do any of that. You can take a single spec document and write something that I think gets you 90, 95% of the way there. And that's really the way co-pilot being positioned. Now, you know, in the real world, that means we're upskilling and we're bringing our workforce to a higher level of productivity and a higher level of cog uh, cognitive quality in the work that they're going to do. Of course, there's also markets like Elance and Upwork that are entire communities of people that do what, Pat? Write press releases for you. Create PowerPoint. By the way, same technical marketing document can, can draft out a really impressive five-slide PowerPoint. And you can say things to it like, I want slide three to be visual showing a split of three uh, main bullet points with three pictures and three bullets beneath each. And it will do that for you. And I don't know about you, Pat, but I hate creating PowerPoint decks. And so what did I used to do? I used to hire people to create my decks for me. And now I do wonder is would I still do that or would I use Copilot? And I think the answer is you probably do a little bit of both, but where you might have to hire someone and take a week to get you a PowerPoint deck, Pat, now you have Copilot create it and you have someone spend an hour making it look perfect for you. So these are things that are going to create great efficiencies. It's really exciting. Um, you know, you can kind of see how this fits in. It's in the edge. It's in big. By the way, great article on Forbes by a senior contributor named Patrick Moorhead. 
uh, where he talks about the AI co-pilot for 365. Um, there was advancements made in teams. There's advancements made in other areas. I will pause here because I want to give you the oxygen. But my big thing to watch has been upskilling, how this work changes that knowledge work category, and, of course, the accuracy that's going to continue to improve with the utilization of these models. But, Pat, I was really impressed. Man, I got to tell you, these demos speak to me in the way that I do work, but I know the way that billions of others get uh, get stuff done. What I liked about it too is, you know, you can go from a PowerPoint deck to a Word doc. You can go from a Word doc, doc to a a PowerPoint deck. You can string together, you know, two or three pieces of data, uh, or sorry, of, of input, and it cranks something out. Now, I want to use this thing. First off, hats off to um, hats off to Microsoft for unleashing and letting um, people other than what Google calls trusted testers uh, uh, to use this. You and I were using this on day one uh, uh, in Redmond for basic uh, Bing Bing chat, and I can't wait. Uh, Microsoft has not opened this up to uh, analysts that that I'm aware of. Uh, or press, I'm really looking forward uh, uh, to that. This could fundamentally change the way that 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 we do work, uh, that the, my team does work, and it's not just n equals one; it's n equal, you know, a billion people uh, out there. Uh, check out the uh, article that I did a, a tag team analysis uh, with Mel uh, Melody Brew and myself, uh, my VP of uh, Modern Works. Uh, modern work um but what's next dan right i mean uh, uh, uh for these folks they've kind of shown uh what they've done now they have to deliver and there's going to be mistakes uh, nothing aggravates me more than people saying hold on slow down i mean it's not like we're talking about um self-driving cars okay that can kill people we're talking about powerpoint word uh, and uh, in Excel, uh, I was at Alta Vista when uh, Google uh, was forming, and I remember, you know, people loved Google because the search was parsed. And you know, back then, uh, for our engineers, that was a dangerous thing. It's not the real internet, you know. People don't want, didn't want the freaking real internet. It was ugly. It brought up a bunch of uh, college essays as its uh, as its top uh, return. They wanted the parsed internet, and Google. You know, they got um, taken to the mat on on everything. Every new feature that Google search added, they got taken to the mat. So um, I, I urge people to, yeah, be caught. Just don't be stupid. Uh, be cautious. But uh, I've been a big believer in this in my entire work career. If you're not breaking some glass or pissing somebody off, you're not leaning in hard enough. It's just the degree of the risk. That, uh, that that comes out. So hats off to Microsoft.